One of the aspects of my job as a production editor at a television station here in Canada is to close caption any commercials that come in. It is a legal requirement here in Canada that all broadcast video be closed captioned. Uh, we're working on Adobe Premiere Pro and I thought I'd show you a quick tutorial of how easy it is to uh, create short form closed captions and this is for videos of probably 90 seconds or less. Uh, so let's give it a go. Okay, I've compacted everything down to one monitor. Normally I'm working on dual monitors, but we'll cram it all into one monitor for the sake of the tutorial. I've created a job here, uh, and uh, in the timeline I have a commercial for a musical called Chicago. I have turned off the track that has the music on it for copyright purposes, but let's take a quick look here. Chicago, set in the razzle-dazzle 1920s, the smash hit winner of six Tony Awards, a Grammy, thousands of standing ovations, and now the number one longest running American musical in Broadway history. Chicago, March 26th at the NMAX Center. Okay, so we'll go back to the beginning. First thing I wanna do is actually enable the ability to view captioning in the uh, preview window over here. So I'm gonna to go to this little wrench here, and I'm gonna come down to closed caption display, and I'll turn on the enable function. I'm also gonna go back to that and come into settings. Now, at a minimum, our station has to display 608 captioning. This is the older format. There also is 708. Uh, in a perfect world, any spot would have 608 and 708 on it. So we're going to, for the purpose of this tutorial, only look at 608. For those spots that have 608 and 708 on it, you'll take up two tracks of data rather than just one. So I'll say OK to that. And then I'm going to come down here and start the process. So I'm going to right click in here, come up to New Item, come across to Captions. OK, I want to choose 608, as I've previously said, CC1. This particular timeline is 29.97 frames per second, non-drop frames, so I'll say OK. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drag this onto an empty track and pull it out to the end, which is 15 seconds. OK, so I'm gonna double click on this. And I have up here, have placed my captions utility window. And if you don't have this, it's just a matter of going to Windows and coming down to Captions, clicking on that, and then you can place this anywhere you want by just taking and grabbing it and moving it around. Uh, I've chosen to place it right here. First thing I'm gonna do is just create a few extra windows of captioning. And you can see down here on the timeline, it's just populating it. Okay, now we've already transcribed this spot. Uh, one of the producers here at the station has listened to it and created a text file. And this is what it looks like. Okay, I prefer it to be all run on. I don't like the sentences chopped into pieces. Uh, one of the things that you'll see that I'll do is I'm going to highlight everything and copy everything and then just paste what I need into the various windows. Uh, you'll also notice that it's in caps. Um, it's a preference here at the station, although I don't think it's a legal requirement. Uh, I do see a lot of captions that come in that are uh, upper and lower case. So uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll stay with our preference of going with caps. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight everything, copy it using Control C, and then we'll go back to the window here. Now, I did wanna point out an option for uh, longer form projects. You can use a uh, website such as otter.ai, and we'll bring that up. So otter.ai, you have to create a, an account, uh, and it's free to upload up to 600 minutes per month of an audio or an audio and video file, and it'll give you a text transcription. If you want anything more, like an SRT file, which would give you the ability to almost have your captions ready to go, timed out for your uh, length of your timeline, uh, you need to pay a premium. 
uh, and it's uh, $10 a month or $100 a year. And that gives you 6,000 minutes uh, per month. Um, but the nice thing about it is that you get a, a data file back that has the timing in it as well. Uh, the free version only gives you the actual transcriptions. Okay, let's keep going here. So, remember I've copied the text from my text file. I'm gonna leave the first field blank, and I'm gonna go ahead in the second field and just paste everything. So I'm gonna highlight everything up to the first sentence. I'll leave that there, and then I'm going to cut using Control X. Paste. Next one, highlight it. And I'm looking for short little chunks of text. Paste. Cut that. And now the longest running American musical in Broadway history. That's a little bit long, but we'll go for it. And I'll create one more field and paste. Okay, so you can only fit so much on one line, so I'm gonna place my cursor just before the R and hit the Enter button in order to move that down to the second line. And we'll just go down and break these apart. This one will probably have to go into three lines. And then the last one, okay. Now the first one, I'm going to delete. One of the things you generally don't want to do is have captioning data right at frame zero. At least at our television station, it fools the decoder when they go to ingest uh, the video file. And sometimes it can overload it, especially if you have a fair amount of captioning information on the very first data field. So I'm going to hit this minus and I'm gonna go up to the second line here, and I'm gonna place that, I can highlight this, I'm gonna place that starting at 10 frames in. Okay, and you can see down here, that's where I've got a little blank section here, which is fine. Okay, now let's move our attention down to the timeline. I'm gonna take this last guy, move it to the back, and I'm just kind of roughly placing them right now. Okay, so I'm gonna use my jaw controller over on my left hand, I'm gonna hit play. Chicago, set in the razzle dazzle 1920s. Okay, so 1920s. Now, I'm gonna grab this handle and move it to where my playhead cursor is. Then I'm gonna take the next one, pull the handle out, and then hit play again. The smash hit winner of six Tony Awards. I okay, I'm gonna bring it back there. Again, third one, drag it out. A Grammy, thousands of standing ovations and... Okay, again, pull the handle back to the playhead cursor. Take the next one, move it up. And now the number one longest running American musical in Broadway history. Okay, and then the last one Pull it out to the end. Chicago, March 26th at the NMAX Center. Okay, so we'll hit home, go to the beginning. Now, I'd like to draw your attention to the preview here. I'm gonna hit play, and let's see if anything, uh, if I've guessed the lengths of the uh, various lines properly so we don't miss characters. Chicago, set in the razzle-dazzle 1920s, the smash hit winner of six Tony Awards, a Grammy, thousands of standing ovations, and now the number one longest running American musical in Broadway history. Chicago, March 26th at the NMAX Center. Okay, that looks good. One of the things I'd like to point out is that generally if you have any lower third graphics, you want to make sure that you now place your uh, closed captioning above those graphics so they don't interfere with that information. So let's take one last look at this and see if that happens. Chicago, set in the razzle-dazzle 1920s, the smash hit winner of six Tony Awards, a Grammy, thousands of standing ovations, and now the number one longest running American musical in Broadway history. Chicago, March 26th. Okay, so it's generally okay until the very end where it's covering up the website. 
So I'm going to come back here and right here, I'm going to determine that I need to move this field up to the top or somewhere else in the frame so it's not covering up important information. So you'll notice here as I click on a field that the corresponding field up here in the top left is highlighted. So I can click on any of these fields in the timeline and that'll take me to the field that I want to edit. But in this case, it's the very last field. So this is highlighted. Now up here, I have X and Y coordinates where I can place this in a custom position or I can use this field of nine squares to place it in a, a, a generic position. So this last one, I'm going to place it in the top left, okay? So there, it now clears the information for the dates, the location, and the website. So now, if we run up for the last two captions. The American musical in Broadway history. Chicago, March 26th at the NMAX Center. Okay, and it jumps up. So basically, we're ready to export this. And in order to do that, you have to make sure that you're exporting to a uh, video format or a codec uh, that supports captioning. In our case, that's the MXF OP1A format. So I'm going to bring up the encoder, control M. We'll drag it into position here. So under format, I am going to select MXF OP1A. And I'm going to use the preset way down here at the bottom, which is XDCAM HD 50 NTSC 60i. Okay, and that is the standard format for our television station, and it also supports closed captioning. The only thing I have to change on that particular preset is to come here to captions and export functions, and I need to change that to embed in output file. Okay, so I'm going to place this on the desktop. I'm going to go ahead and say export. Okay, now I'm going to drag that from my desktop back into my project folder. Okay, one of the gotchas though is that when you bring a file back in that has captioning on it, you have to make sure that Adobe Premiere Pro uh, is enabled to read those captions. So I'm going to go to my preferences. Okay, and I'm going to go to the media tab. Take a couple of seconds for that to appear. And this option right here, include captions on import, has to be enabled with a check mark for uh, incoming captions on uh, uh, codecs that are capable of it to be recognized. So just make sure that that's checked. Okay, now if I double click on this in order to load this into this viewer, one of the things you have to make sure is that if you're going to preview a file, I'm gonna come up here and you also have to enable the viewing of captions there too as well. And I'm gonna go into settings, just confirm that it's 608 because that's what we generated. So let's go ahead and play this. Chicago, set in the razzle dazzle 1920s, the smash hit winner of six Tony Awards, a Grammy, thousands of standing ovations, and now the number one longest running American musical in Broadway history. Chicago, March 26th at the NMAX Center. Cool. Looks like it worked. We brought it back in. We did a quality control check to make sure that uh, everything's correct. One of the things you don't want to do is send a, a file off assuming that the captions are good. You always want to bring that file back into your system and confirm that. The text that you see in the preview window is coming from the timeline. It's not coming from being embedded in a file that now you are taking a look at. So one of the things I want to emphasize is that you always bring the file back in and preview it, and those are going to be true captions, and you can be pretty sure that what you're going to send out uh, to wherever you need this to go is going to have good, clean captioning. Okay, so that was captioning in Adobe Premiere Pro short form. Uh, if you want to do anything long form, I would consider paying for a service. Uh, the one that I was describing earlier, otter.ai, that website, uh, you can pay your premium charge and get a file back, an SRT file, and you just take that file, import it into Adobe Premiere Pro, lay it on the timeline on an empty track, and 
magically everything should line up as long as you haven't uh, edited something in the meantime. So I hope that was useful to you. See you next time.